On today's episode of Hackbyte, I'm going to show you how hackers can use DNS spoofing and a Wi-Fi pineapple to trick you into visiting malicious websites and handing over your online credentials. DNS, or the domain name system, is commonly referred to as a phone book for the internet. DNS is essentially a database that lets us take websites like Google or Facebook.com and convert these domain names into IP addresses that our devices can use in order to communicate over a network layer. So essentially when you type in a website like Google or Facebook into your web browser, what's happening is your browser will reach out to a DNS server and then ask for the proper IP address that corresponds with this domain. And after getting that IP address, it can then establish communication with the server in order to load and interact with the website. However, a type of attack called DNS cache poisoning can happen when an attacker tampers with DNS records and routes domain names to malicious IP addresses that can be hosting phishing websites. For example, if the attacker is in control of your local network, this makes it easy for them to route specific DNS requests to domains like Google or Facebook.com to fake local versions of the website that they're in complete control of. In a previous episode, I demonstrated how man-in-the-middle attacks can be used in order to take over a local network connection by using rogue access points on a Wi-Fi pineapple. But today we're going to take this a step further to see how attackers can redirect login forms for sites like google.com and use this in order to steal your online login credentials. To follow along, all you're going to need is a Linux computer and a Wi-Fi pineapple. This episode is sponsored by PCBWay, who manufactures high quality circuit boards and offers turnkey solutions for product assembly, 3D fabrication, machining, and more. Check out PCBWay.com for more information and learn how you can get your next big project started today. To follow along with this demonstration, you'll need to set up a rogue access point on your Wi-Fi Pineapple using the Pine AP interface, which you can learn more about by following my video in the description below. And to keep the man in the middle demo simple and ethical, you can just connect your phone or other Wi-Fi device directly to one of the rogue access points. After logging into your Wi-Fi Pineapple, you can go over to the Pine AP interface, which is where you can manage your rogue access points and also do things like run Karma attacks and capture reconnaissance on the networks that local devices have connected to. Now, as you can see here under the SSID pool, we're currently broadcasting the three following fake Wi-Fi networks and two client devices have already connected. Now, if I navigate over to the client tab, this is where we can manage the connection of our victim devices and also see some basic information about them. Like for example, you can see that my phone is currently connected to the Starbucks Wi-Fi SSID. And you can also see that my phone is a OnePlus Nord N10 device. Now the Wi-Fi pineapple is essentially just acting as a man in the middle between my phone and also a legitimate Wi-Fi network, which means that we can intercept and modify web traffic while allowing it to completely pass through. And as we can verify here, you can see that the Wi-Fi pineapple is actually connected to the following SSID. Now, in order to intercept and modify the traffic, what we have to do is modify the request for specific domain names and basically resolve them to a local IP address that's hosting a malicious phishing website. So to do this, we can just go ahead and pop open a web shell by clicking on the following icon up here or we can also just connect via SSH on a local terminal, which I'm gonna go ahead and do, since this is just a little bit faster. So as you can see here, I've popped open a Linux terminal and we can just SSH directly into the Wi-Fi pineapple since it's a tethered connected device. So I can do this just by running SSH, the root user at 172.16.42.1, which you can see up here is the IP address of the Wi-Fi pineapple. And then I can just go ahead and type in the root password, and this should drop us directly into a Linux shell that's running on the pineapple. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and edit the host file, which you can find under etc slash hosts by running nano slash etc slash hosts. So the purpose of the host file is to let us map local IP addresses to a memorable name, so that way it's easy for us to interface with network devices without having to memorize their entire IP address. Like for example, as you can see here, we have the common localhost name, 
which is currently pointing to the local IP address 127.0.0.1. Or you can also create custom entries for other devices that are on your network for things like network attached storage devices or maybe just a locally connected printer. Now, since the host file is actually gonna be accessed before your network device reaches out to a DNS server, this means we can also create an entry for legitimate websites like google.com or Facebook and have these point to a local web server that's hosting a malicious phishing site. Now, in order to do this, all we have to do is just create a new entry in the table here and paste the IP address of the device that's gonna be hosting that website. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop open a new Linux terminal and grab the IP address of the computer that I'm currently working on, which is what we're gonna be hosting the website from. So I can just run if config and then copy the following IP address here, which is 172.16.42.106 and create a new entry here that points to the website google.com. So to save this file, I can do control O for output and then control X to close the file. Next, I can just clear my DNS cache by pasting the following command here, which you can find in the description below. And then we can also verify that the domain google.com is actually pointing to our local IP address by typing nslookupdoogle.com. And as you can see here, it's in fact pointing to our local web server. Now, since I can't actually show you how to set up a full phishing website, particularly against such a high profile target like Google, we're instead gonna take a look at the tools and frameworks that an attacker could use to set up one of these sites and also take a look at a benign example that targets Google.com instead. So now that we're redirecting the victim devices to our local IP address, the next step is to host a web server that can process actual requests and also grab user data, and then set up an enticing phishing website that tricks the unknowing user into entering their login credentials. So for this demonstration, I'm using the Versatile Nginx web server, which you can set up by following my guide in the description below. But there's also a bunch of other free popular web servers that an attacker might use on Linux, like Apache or LightTPD. But as you can see here, I'm keeping my default Nginx configuration profile pretty simple. Um, and if we scroll down here, you can see that we have a listener that's set up on port 80 for a connection over HTTP. And the reason why we can't use something like HTTPS is because most modern browsers will actually flag self-signed SSL certificates. So generally, an unsophisticated attacker will have a hard time getting this to slip past the victim. And if I scroll further down here, you can also see the root directory that's pointing towards the location of the phishing template and website um, as is stored on my computer. And if I scroll further down here, you can also see a short PHP configuration that allows us to set up backend processing for the received login credentials. Now, as for the phishing page, there's quite a few tools out there that make it easy for attackers to generate templates for popular sites like Gmail or Microsoft logins, which we'll take a look at in future episodes. But to keep things simple, I created this Google phishing form completely from scratch that just logs the user credentials directly to a text file on my computer. Now, if you want to try out this demo yourself, you can find it linked in the description below, as well as some other awesome resources. So let's try out the attack. So switching over to my phone, you can see that I'm connected to a Starbucks Wi-Fi network from the comfort of my basement, which is highly suspicious, but something you probably wouldn't notice if you fell victim to a Karma attack. Now, if I go over to a web browser, you can see that I'm still able to access the internet as usual, since my traffic is basically just passing directly through the pineapple. But if I type in a key website like Google.com, you can see that we're immediately snagged by this phishing page instead of the normal Google website. And over on the hacker's side, you can see that it was trivial to grab the plain text credentials using this convincing phishing page. As I demonstrated, DNS spoofing is a really sneaky way that hackers can steal your login credentials or other online secrets. But if you wanna protect yourself against these types of attacks, the easiest thing you can do is make sure your Wi-Fi devices are not set to automatically join Wi-Fi networks. And you can also check to make sure that the sites you're logging into have a secure HTTPS connection. As always, if you have any questions or ideas for upcoming videos you wanna see covered on the channel, you can drop them in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter at Alex Lind. And if you wanna help support the show and help us continue to make free educational hacking content, you can head over to hackout.com and pick up a nugget so you can follow along with future projects and episodes. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.